Barrier technology is a new groundbreaking, game-changing technology that will solve the last sticking plaster in a cable network. That's the in-home domain in terms of open connections, loose connections, all relating to shielding effectiveness within the home. So where does barrier fit? So what we are talking about primarily is any connection in the home that can be disconnected or come loose and still be connected to the network which would induce noise into the network. This is the connector that you would have on the back of a CPE uh, in the home today. That could be the set-top box, the cable modem, the void modem. This is a standard F connector with a nice antenna sticking out of the front. The new barrier technology has a slightly different connector. This connector is a standard compression connector, as can be seen, but it has an additional function that will, in effect, provide shielding effectiveness when it's disconnected. You can see the unique front of this connector. It has a moving part. You can see the moving part there. What is happening here is that there is a series switch within the connection that breaks the connection when you disconnect from the CPE equipment, forming a shield at the back of the connector, which in effect provides up to 40 dB shielding effectiveness when the connector is disconnected from the CPE. So no termination, just an open connector, with unbelievable shielding effectiveness which will protect the whole network from 5 megs potentially all the way to 2 gigahertz. The next part is an F female so this could be the splice, it could be the splitter, it could be an amplifier, it, anywhere there's an F female connection the same technology with the same function is uh, available in the, in the barrier te technology. Then uh, we have a lower cost version of the barrier technology for a splitter or splice connection where we only need to create 20 to 25 dB shielding effectiveness to bring an open port down into the noise floor. If you want to fix the in-home connection you can do one of two things. You could cut off the existing F connector that you use today and fit the barrier connector or there is a barrier adapter which does exactly the same function as the barrier compression connector. It has a unique thread lock, dry thread lock, which only activates when it is screwed onto the existing connection and it will not come off. So now we can convert the existing connection from a set-top box or a modem, just remove it from the set-top, fix it onto the F connector and you've now created a barrier connector which was which is permanently fixed you put that back on the CPE and then if there's a disconnection in the home the home churns you're completely future proofed in addition if you wish if there was a splice connection or a splitter connection and you do not want to change out the product to, with a, to add an integrated barrier there's an additional barrier adapter which is in the other way around, this is the F male to barrier female and this can be screwed onto the uh, passive uh, F port again it has the dry thread lock so once it's on it's not coming off and then you end up with the barrier functionality there's one other bonus that you get with barrier and that is to do with the spring the push force of the spring of the barrier mechanism when you put this onto a standard F port, it is pushing, up, pushing back on the thread. This, when the connector comes loose, gives you an additional 10 to 15 dB screaming effectiveness with even a loose connector. So that covers all the parameters. All that's left to do now is to actually show you it working with real shield and effectiveness. In order to show the barrier technology in terms of real shielding effectiveness, which is what the whole thing is about, we're going to use a system that we brought to the show, which does the same test as a GTEM cell or a Comet tube, where you will be actually looking at the leakage and screening effectiveness of a given device, a connector, a cable, a home amplifier. 
And to do that, we've brought a, what we call a absorption clamp. This is a European system, ironically uh, adopted in Europe, uh, but designed in the United States. So uh, rather uh, unique. And that uh, is a simple system that uh, we've got on a network analyzer which will show real screening effectiveness of a leaky port. We're going to demonstrate on a house amplifier, which has got a barrier port, female port, and it's got standard ports. And we will open those ports, and you will see the difference between barrier and a standard F female. Then on the same system, we're going to put a standard open F male, as you would if you disconnected from a set-top box or a cable modem, and we'll show the screening effectiveness of an open F male, and then again we will retrofit with barrier and show the, the differences in shielding effectiveness. Okay, so here is the, uh, the absorption clamp. This is basically um, a set of very, very sensitive uh, ferrites that measure uh, the, the uh, leakage that uh, you get from a device that comes onto the uh, outer braid of this cable that runs through the clamp. So here we have a house amplifier, all terminated. The clamp is uh, connected to the in and out, so we have a closed loop system. If I open a single port, then the leakage, the shielding effectiveness of this device will degrade and the leakage will come into the device, come back out of the device onto the shield of this cable and be picked up onto the absorption clamp. The absorption clamp is calibrated, it has a loss curve. We've calibrated out the loss curve to get a real-time measurement on the network analyzer. So what we're seeing on the network analyzer is the shielding effectiveness of this complete system, including the home amplifier. And as you can see, the noise floor of this system is around 100, 105 dB. The red line you can see here is a limit line that in Europe we call the bare minimum screening effectiveness, which is class A screening. Due to LTE now, the class A screening has come down 20 dB because of the 700 to 860 MHz band here. Now we come down 5, 10, 15, 20. We're down at 95 to 100 dB. It's recommended for the shielding effectiveness to prevent LTE signals within the home causing a problem. Okay. Here we have a home amplifier which is all terminated, completely closed, and the noise floor of this amplifier is around 100 dB as can be seen on the real-time shield effective measurement. What we're going to do now is open a port. There are three ports on the top here. Two ports are standard F female ports as you've got today and one port is with the barrier technology. The first thing we'll do is open up the first port. This will cause shielding leakage and as you can see now on the screen We've come from 100 dB noise floor to around 80 dB. So we've, we've come up 20 dB. If I take a second port off, you will get a summation of the noise, which could equate to around another 6 dB. And now you can see even on the bare minimum class A limit lines, we're out of the limit lines. Marker four and three is important to keep a look at. That's the LTE band. The screening effectiveness at the moment is now 70 dB, 75 dB from 100 dB, so that is not, not good. So I will now replace the terminators. We will go back to the noise floor. So now we're back at the 100 dB noise floor. Now we'll take off the terminator, which has the barrier connection on. Remember, we went up to 80 dB with a single open port before. Now we have an open port and we're still in the noise floor. The barrier connector can be seen on the amplifier very clearly. This has around a 30 to 40 dB screen effectiveness. If I connect to this connection, the connector becomes a standard connector. If I activate the, the, the barrier connector, you can see it's a standard connector. If I open the connection, so I've disconnected, you're back down in the noise floor. So the next test is to actually show now an open mail, standard open mail that could be left off the back of a set top. If a customer churned, you could have many of these left connected to the, to the tap, to the uh, amplifier. 
to the splice. We'll now connect up, put this on. So now we have an open male connector sat in air as it will be in the living room. Now take a look at the screening effect in this, the shielding. If you look at the LTE band, markers 4 and 3 at the top, we've now come from 100 dB shielding effectiveness to only 50. We've done tests on LTE with open ports, open male ports, and we found that a 0.2 volt per meter LTE signal would take out a QAM channel completely. A typical handset could give you a volt per meter, a base station 5 volts per meter. So open male connections are absolutely paramount that you, you close them. Barrier does that automatically. So let's look at the port again. So now we have the standard port with 50 dB shielding. Now we will fit a barrier adapter. Barrier male, we will convert this standard connection to a barrier connection. So now we will end up with a male connection, completely open. So now we have the same connection, male connection, have a look at the noise floor. We've gone from 50 dB back down into the noise floor with an open male connection. So if you make a disconnect within the home, anywhere, you will be completely screened. Your network is protected automatically. It's completely done.